The Asari were the first species to discover the citadel. When the Salarians arrived, it was the Asari who proposed the establishment of the Citadel Council to maintain peace throughout the galaxy. Since then, the Asari have served as the mediators and centrists of the Council. An all-female race, the Asari reproduce through a form of parthenogenesis. They can attune their nervous system to that of another individual of any gender and of any species to reproduce. This capability has led to the unseemly and inaccurate rumors about Asari promiscuity. Asari can live for over a thousand years, passing through three stages of life. In the maiden stage, they wander restlessly, seeking new knowledge and experience. When the matron stage begins, they meld with interesting partners to produce their offspring. This ends when they reach the matriarch stage, where they assume the roles of leaders and counselors. The second species to join the citadel, the Salarians are warm-blooded amphibians with a hyperactive metabolism. Salarians think fast, talk fast, and move fast. To Salarians, other species seem sluggish and dull-witted. Unfortunately, their metabolic speed leaves them with a relatively short lifespan. Salarians over the age of 40 are a rarity. The Salarians were responsible for advancing the development of the primitive Krogan species to use as soldiers during the Rachni Wars. They were also behind the creation of the genophage bioweapon the Turians used to quell the Krogan rebellion several centuries later. Salarians are known for their observational capability and non-linear thinking. This manifests as an aptitude for research and espionage. They are constantly experimenting and inventing, and it is generally accepted that they always know more than they are letting on. Roughly 1,200 years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction, only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races. The Hanar homeworld of Kajay, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. Though now extinct, the Rachni once threatened every species in Citadel space. Over 2,000 years ago, explorers foolishly opened a mass relay to a previously unknown system and encountered something never seen before or since, a species of spacefaring insects guided by a hive mind intelligence. Unfortunately, the Rachni were not peaceful and the galaxy was plunged into a series of conflicts known as the Rachni Wars. Attempts to negotiate were futile, as it was impossible to make contact with the hive queens that guided the race from beneath the surface of their toxic home world. The emergence of the Krogan ended the Rachni Wars. Bred to survive the harshest environments, the Krogan were able to strike at the queens in their lairs and reclaim conquered council worlds. But when Krogan fleets pressed them back to their home world, 
the Rachni refused to surrender, and the Krogan eradicated them from the galaxy. The Elcor are a citadel species native to the high-gravity world Dakuna. They are massive creatures, standing on four muscular legs for increased stability. Elcor moves slowly, an evolved response to an environment where a fall can be lethal. This has colored their psychology, making them deliberate and conservative. Elcor's speech is ponderous and monotone. Among themselves, scent, slight movements, and subvocalized infrasound convey shades of meaning that make a human smile seem as subtle as a fireworks display. Since their subtlety can lead to misunderstandings with other species, the Elcor often go out of their way to clarify when they are being sarcastic, amused, or angry. Dakuna's high gravity impedes mountain formation. Most of the world consists of flat, open plains, which prehistoric Elcor wandered across in small family bands. Modern Elcor still prefer open sky and can become restless and uncomfortable on long starship journeys. The Geth are a humanoid race of networked AIs. They were created by the Quarians 300 years ago as tools of labor and war. When the Geth showed signs of self-evolution, the Quarians attempted to exterminate them. The Geth won the resulting war. This example has led to legal, systematic repression of artificial intelligences in galactic society. The Geth possess a unique distributed intelligence. An individual has rudimentary animal instincts, but as their numbers and proximity increase, the apparent intelligence of each individual improves. In groups, they can reason, analyze situations, and use tactics, as well as any organic race. Geth space is located at the trailing end of the Perseus arm, beyond the lawless Terminus systems. The Perseus Veil, an obscuring dark nebula of opaque gas and dust, lies between their space and the Terminus systems. The Hanar are a citadel species known for excessive politeness. They speak with scrupulous precision and take offense at improper language. Hanar that expect to deal with other species take special courses to help them unlearn their tendency to take offense at improper speech. All Hanar have two names. The face name is known to the world. The soul name is kept for use among close friends and relations. Hanar never refer to themselves in the first person in conversation with someone they know on a face name basis. To do so is considered egotistical, so instead they refer to themselves as this one, or the impersonal it. Their homeworld, Kajay, has 90% ocean cover and orbits an energetic white star, resulting in a permanent blanket of cloud. Due to the presence of Prothean ruins on the world, many Hanar worship them, and Hanar myths often speak of an elder race that civilized them by teaching them language. When the Asari discovered the citadel, they also discovered the Keepers, a docile, multi-limbed insect race that seemingly exists only to maintain and repair the great Prothean station. Early attempts to communicate with or study the Keepers were failures, and it is now illegal to interfere with or impede Keeper activity. Because they are completely non-threatening, Keepers have become virtually invisible to everyone else. Similarly, they seem indifferent to other species, except for their tendency to help new arrivals integrate themselves into the Citadel. No matter how many Keepers die due to old age, violence, or accident, they maintain a constant number. No one has discovered the source of new Keepers, but some hypothesize they are genetic constructs, biological androids created somewhere deep in the inaccessible core of the Citadel itself. The Krogan evolved in a hostile and vicious environment. Until the invention of gunpowder weapons, eaten by predators was still the number one cause of Krogan fatalities. Afterwards, it was death by gunshot. When the Solarians discovered them, the Krogan were a brutal, primitive species, struggling to survive a self-inflicted nuclear winter. The Solarians culturally uplifted them, teaching them to use and build modern technology so they could serve as soldiers in the Rachni War. Liberated from the harsh conditions of their homeworld, the quick-breeding Krogan experienced an unprecedented population explosion. They began to colonize nearby worlds. 
even though these worlds were already inhabited. The Krogan rebellions lasted nearly a century, only ending when the Turians unleashed the Genophage, a Salarian-developed bioweapon that crushed all Krogan resistance. The Genophage makes only one in a thousand pregnancies viable, and today the Krogan are a slowly dying breed. Understandably, the Krogan harbor a grudge against all other species, especially the Turians. Driven from their home system by the Geth nearly three centuries ago, most Quarians now live aboard the migrant fleet, a flotilla of 50,000 vessels ranging in size from passenger shuttles to mobile space stations. Home to 17 million Quarians, the flotilla understandably has scarce resources. Because of this, each Quarian must go on a rite of passage known as the pilgrimage when they come of age. They leave the fleet and only return once they have found something of value they can bring back to their people. Other species tend to look down on the Quarians for creating the Geth and for the negative impact their fleet has when it enters a system. This has led to many myths and rumors about the Quarians, including the belief that underneath their clothes and breathing masks, they are actually cybernetic creatures, a combination of organic and synthetic parts. The Volus are a member species of the Citadel with their own embassy but they are also a client race of the Turians. Centuries ago, they were voluntarily absorbed into the hierarchy, effectively trading their mercantile prowess for Turian military protection. Erun, their homeworld, lies far beyond the normal life zone of its star. However, the world has a high-pressure greenhouse atmosphere that traps enough heat to support an ammonia-based biochemistry. As a result, the Volus must wear pressure suits and breathers when dealing with other species, as conventional nitrogen-oxygen air mixtures are poisonous to them, and in the low-pressure atmospheres tolerable to most species, their flesh will actually split open. Volus culture is tribal, bartering lands and even people to gain status. This culture of exchange inclines them to economic pursuits. It was the Volus who authored the Unified Banking Act, and they continue to monitor and balance the Citadel economy. After the Geth secure a location, they round up and impale dead and living bodies on mechanical spikes. The spikes rapidly transform these victims into withered husks, extracting water and trace minerals, and replacing them with cybernetics. The cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into mindless killing machines, some Alliance soldiers refer to the husk-generating spikes as dragon's teeth, a reference to the mythological berserkers who sprang up from the earth wherever the teeth of the dragon Eris were planted. Dragon's teeth and husks bear little resemblance to other pieces of Geth technology. No one is sure why a synthetic race would bother to drain the minuscule amount of recoverable resources from organic corpses, though the value of reusing them as shock troops is obvious. The Citadel is an ancient deep space station, presumably constructed by the Protheans. Since the Prothean extinction, numerous species have come to call the Citadel home. It serves as the political, cultural, and financial capital of the galactic community. To represent their interests, most species maintain embassies on the Presidium, the Citadel's inner ring. The Citadel Tower in the center of the Presidium holds the Citadel Council Chambers. Council affairs often have far-reaching effects on the rest of the galactic community. Five arms, known as the Wards, extend from the Presidium. Their inner surfaces have been built into cities, populated by millions of inhabitants from across the galaxy. The Citadel is virtually indestructible. If attacked, the station can close its arms to form a solid, impregnable shell. For as long as the station has existed, an enigmatic race called the Keepers has maintained it. The Council is an executive committee composed of representatives from the Asari Republics, the Turian Hierarchy, and the Salarian Union. Though they have no official power over the independent governments of other species, the Council's decisions carry great weight throughout the galaxy. No single council race is strong enough to defy the other two, and all have a vested interest in compromise and cooperation. 
Each of the council species has general characteristics associated with the various aspects of governing the galaxy. The Asari are typically seen as diplomats and mediators. The Salarians gather intelligence and information. The Turians provide the bulk of the military and peacekeeping forces. Any species granted an embassy on the Citadel is considered an associate member, bound by the accords of the Citadel conventions. Associate members may bring issues to the attention of the Council, though they have no input on the decision. The Human Systems Alliance became an associate member of the Citadel in 2165. Spectres are agents from the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance and answer only to the Citadel Council. They are elite military operatives, granted the authority to deal with threats to peace and stability in whatever way they deem necessary. They operate independently or in groups of two or three. Some are empathetic peacekeepers, resolving disputes through diplomacy. Others are cold-blooded assassins, ruthlessly dispatching problem individuals. All get the job done one way or another, often operating outside the bounds of galactic law. The Spectres were founded after the Salarians joined the Council. For many years, they operated in secrecy as backroom problem solvers. Only after the Krogan rebellions did their activities become publicized. Assignment of a Spectre is less contentious than a military deployment, but makes it clear that the Council is concerned about a situation. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate any dormant mass relays discovered, a practice considered dangerous and irresponsible by Council-aligned races. When a Turian patrol discovered a human fleet attempting to activate a relay, they attacked. One human vessel survived, retreating to the colony of Shanxi. The Turians followed, quickly defeating the local forces. Shanxi was occupied the first and to date only human world to be conquered by an alien species. The Turians believed the handful of ships they defeated represented the bulk of human defenses, so they were unprepared when the second fleet, under Admiral Castany Drescher, launched a strong counter-offensive, evicting them from Shanxi. The Turians mobilized for full-scale war, drawing the attention of the rest of the galaxy. The Council quickly intervened, forcing a truce. Fortunately for humanity, the first contact war was ended with a diplomatic solution. The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Saul's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. Pharos is a habitable world in the Attican Beta Cluster. Two-thirds of the habitable surface is covered with the ruins of a crumbling Prothean megatropolis. In the millennia since the Prothean extinction, the ruins have been repeatedly picked over by looters many times. Pharos was considered a poor prospect for colonization, as little open ground remains for agriculture. The only sizable freshwater sources are the poles, which are tapped by the decaying Prothean aqueduct systems. The dead cities, while in good condition considering their antiquity, are of uncertain stability. Ground level is congested by a dozen meters of fallen debris, and the air is fouled by dust. In 2178, the Human Exogeny Corporation announced its intention to place a permanent colony on Pharos to thoroughly explore the ruins. The pioneer settlement was placed on the upper levels of several intact skyscrapers, using the surviving Prothean aqueducts and rooftop hydroponic gardens to support the population. 
Noveria is a cool, rocky world with most of its hydrosphere locked up in massive glaciers. A privately chartered colony world, the planet is owned by the Noveria Development Corporation Holding Company. The NDC is funded by investment capital from two dozen high technology development firms and administrated by an executive board representing their interests. The investors built remote hot labs in isolated locations across Noveria's surface. These facilities are used for research too dangerous or controversial to be performed elsewhere, as Noveria is technically not part of Citadel space and therefore exempt from council law. By special arrangement, Citadel special tactics and reconnaissance agents have been granted extraterritorial privileges, but it remains to be seen how committed the executive board is to that principle. Given its unique situation, it is understandable that Noveria is often implicated in all manner of wild conspiracy theories. The terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse, beyond the space administered by the Citadel Council or claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is populated by a loose affiliation of minor species. United only in their refusal to acknowledge the political authority of the Council or adhere to the Citadel Conventions. Their independence comes at a price. The terminus is fraught with conflict. War among the various species is common, as governments and dictators constantly rise and fall. The region is a haven for illegal activities, particularly piracy and the slave trade. At least once a year, a fleet from the terminus invades the nearby Attican Traverse. These attacks are typically small raids against poorly defended colonies. The Council rarely retaliates, as sending patrols into the Terminus systems could unify the disparate species against their common foe, triggering a long and costly war. The Mako Infantry Fighting Vehicle was designed for the System Alliance's frigates. Though the interior is cramped, an M35 is small enough to be carried in the cargo bay and easily deployed on virtually any world. With its turreted 155mm mass accelerator and coaxially mounted machine gun, the Mako can provide a fire team with weapon support as well as mobility. Since Alliance Marines may be required to fight on any world, the Mako is environmentally sealed and equipped with microthrusters for use on low-gravity planetoids. The Mako is powered by a sealed hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell and includes a small element zero core. While not large enough to nullify the vehicle's mass, the core can reduce it enough to be safely airdropped. When used in conjunction with thrusters, it also allows the Mako to extricate itself from difficult terrain. Biotics is the ability of rare individuals to manipulate dark energy and create mass effect fields through the use of electrical impulses from the brain. Intense training and surgically implanted amplifiers are necessary for a biotic to produce mass effect fields powerful enough for practical use. The relative strength of biotic abilities varies greatly among species and with each individual. There are three branches of biotics. Telekinesis uses mass lowering fields to levitate or impel objects. Mass raising kinetic fields are used to block or pin objects. Spatial distortion uses rapidly shifting mass fields to shred objects. Most organic species are capable of developing biotic abilities, though there are risks involved. Biotics are the result of an in utero exposure to element zero. This usually causes fatal cancers in the victim, but in rare cases, it coalesces into nodules within the fetus's developing nervous system. An artificial intelligence is a self-aware computing system capable of learning and independent decision-making. Creation of a conscious AI requires adaptive code, a slow, expensive education, and a specialized quantum computer called a blue box. An AI cannot be transmitted across a communication channel or computer network. Without its blue box, an AI is no more than data files. Loading these files into a new blue box will create a new personality, as variations in the quantum hardware and runtime results create unpredictable variations. The geth serve as a cautionary tale against the dangers of rogue AI, and in Citadel space, they are technically illegal. 
Advocacy groups argue, however, that an AI is a living, conscious entity, deserving the same rights as organics. They argue that continued use of the term artificial is institutionalized racism on the part of organic life. The term synthetic is considered the politically correct alternative. A virtual intelligence is an advanced form of user interface software. VIs use a variety of methods to simulate natural conversation, including an audio interface and an avatar personality to interact with. Although a VI can provide a convincing emulation of sentience, they are not self-aware, nor can they learn or take independent action. VIs are used as operating systems on commercial and home computers. Minimal VI agents are also available. Agents are compact and specialized. Some serve as personal secretaries, filtering calls and scheduling meetings based on user-defined priorities. Others are advanced search engines, propagating themselves across the extranet to collate user-requested data. Commercial VIs in a variety of stock personalities are available at any software retailer. Boutique firms and hobbyists also build unique VIs to personal specification. Although software emulation of living personalities is illegal, reconstructions of famous historical figures are common. When subjected to an electrical current, the rare material dubbed element zero, or ESO, emits a dark energy field that raises or lowers the mass of all objects within it. This mass effect is used in countless ways, from generating artificial gravity to manufacturing high-strength construction materials. It is most prominently used to enable faster-than-light space travel. ESO is generated when solid matter, such as a planet, is affected by the energy of a star going supernova. The material is common in the asteroid debris that orbits neutron stars and pulsars. These are dangerous places to mine, requiring extensive use of robotics, telepresence, and shielding to survive the incredible radiation from the dead star. Only a few major corporations can afford the setup costs required to work these primary sources. Humanity discovered refined element zero at the Prothean Research Station on Mars, allowing them to create mass effect fields and develop FTL travel. Element zero can increase or decrease the mass of a volume of space-time when subjected to an electrical current. With a positive current, mass is increased. With a negative current, mass is decreased. The stronger the current, the greater the magnitude of the dark energy mass effect. In space, low mass fields allow FTL travel and inexpensive surface to orbit transit. High mass fields create artificial gravity and push space debris away from vessels. In manufacturing, low mass fields permit the creation of evenly blended alloys while high-mass compaction creates dense, sturdy construction materials. The military makes extensive use of mobility-enhancing technologies, with mass effect utilizing fighting vehicles' standard frontline issue in most military forces. Mass effect fields are also essential in the creation of kinetic barriers or shields to protect against enemy fire. Mass relays are feats of Prothean engineering advanced far beyond the technology of any living species. They are enormous structures scattered throughout the stars and can create corridors of virtually mass-free space, allowing instantaneous transit between locations separated by years or even centuries of travel using conventional FTL drives. Primary mass relays can propel ships thousands of light years, often from one spiral arm of the galaxy to another. However, they have fixed one-to-one -one connections. A primary relay connects to one other primary relay and nowhere else. Secondary relays can only propel ships across a few hundred light years. However, they are omnidirectional. A secondary relay can send a ship to any other relay within its limited range. There are many dormant primary relays whose corresponding twins have not yet been located. These are left inactive until their partner is charted. As established civilizations are unwilling to blindly open a passage that might connect them to a hostile species. Omni tools are handheld devices that combine a computer microframe, sensor analysis pack, and mini factoring fabricator. 
Versatile and reliable, an Omni-Tool can be used to analyze and adjust the functionality of most standard equipment, including weapons and armor, from a distance. The fabrication module can rapidly assemble small three-dimensional objects from common reusable industrial plastics, ceramics, and light alloys. This allows for field repairs and modifications to most standard items, as well as the reuse of salvaged equipment. Omni-tools are standard issue for soldiers and first-in colonists. Combat hard suits use a dual-layer system to protect the wearer. The inner layer consists of fabric armor with kinetic padding. Areas that don't need to be flexible, such as the chest or shins, are reinforced with sheets of lightweight ablative ceramic. The outer layer consists of automatically generated kinetic barriers. Objects traveling above a certain speed will trigger the barrier's reflex system and be deflected, provided there is enough energy left in the shield's power cell. Armored hard suits are sealable to protect the wearer from extremes of temperature and atmosphere. Standard equipment includes an onboard mini frame and a communications, navigation, and sensing suite. The mini frame is designed to accept and display data from a weapon's smart targeting system to make it easier to locate and eliminate enemies. Kinetic barriers, more commonly called shields, provide protection against most mass accelerator weapons. Whether on a starship or a soldier's suit of armor, the basic principle remains the same. Kinetic barriers are repulsive mass effect fields projected from tiny emitters. These shields safely deflect small objects traveling at rapid velocities. This affords protection from bullets and other dangerous projectiles, but still allows the user to sit down without knocking away their chair. The shielding afforded by kinetic barriers does not protect against extremes of temperature, toxins, or radiation. Medigel is a common medicinal salve used by paramedics, EMTs, and military personnel. It combines several useful applications, a local anesthetic, disinfectant, and clotting agent all in one. Once applied, the gel is designed to grip tight to flesh until subjected to a frequency of ultrasound. It is sealable against liquids, most notably blood, as well as contaminants and gases. The gel is a genetically engineered bioplasm created by the CERTA Foundation, a medical technology megacorp based on Earth. Technically, Medigel violates council laws against genetic engineering, but to date, it has proved far too useful to ban. All modern infantry weapons, from pistols to assault rifles, use micro-scaled mass accelerator technology. Projectiles consist of tiny metal slugs suspended within a mass-reducing field, accelerated by magnetic force to speeds that inflict kinetic damage. The ammo magazine is a simple block of metal. The gun's internal computer calculates the mass needed to reach the target based on distance, gravity, and atmospheric pressure, then shears off an appropriate sized slug from the block. A single block can supply thousands of rounds, making ammo a non-issue during any engagement. Top-line weapons also feature smart targeting that allows them to correct for weather and environment. Firing on a target in a howling gale feels the same as it does on a calm day at the practice range. Smart targeting does not mean a bullet will automatically find the mark every time the trigger is pulled. It only makes it easier for the marksman to aim. Personal History Summary Profile Born into a naval family, you spent your childhood on ships and stations. You moved from posting to posting as your parents were reassigned. You enlisted in the Alliance military yourself on the day you turned 18. You were on shore leave at Elysium when the first wave of the Scillian Blitz struck. A massive coalition force of slavers, crime syndicates and Batarian warlocks attacked a human colony determined to wipe it out. You rallied the civilian inhabitants, leading them in their desperate fight to hold off the invaders. When enemy troops broke through the colony's defenses, you single-handedly held them off and sealed the breach. After hours of brutal fighting, reinforcements finally arrived and the enemy broke ranks and fled. 
Because of your actions, Elysium was saved and you are regarded throughout the Alliance as a true hero. Aliens, non-council races, Krogan, the Krogan Rebellions. After the Ragnai War, the quick-breeding Krogan expanded at the expense of their neighbors. Warlords leveraged their veteran soldiers to seize living space while the council races were still grateful. Over centuries the Krogan conquered world after world. There was always just one more needed. When the council finally demanded withdrawal from the Asari colony of Lucia, Krogan overlord Kredak stormed off the citadel daring the council to take their worlds back. But the Council had taken precautions. The finest STG operators and Asari huntresses had been drafted into a covered observation force, the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. The Spectres opened the war with crippling strategic strikes. Krogan planets went dark as computer viruses flooded the extranet. Sabotaged antimatter refineries disappeared in blue-white annihilation. Headquarters stations shattered into orbit clogging debris, rammed by pre-placed suicide freighters. Still, this only delayed the inevitable. The war would have been lost if not for the first contact with the Turians, who responded to Krogan threats with a prompt declaration of war. Being on the far side of Krogan space from the Council, the Turians advanced rapidly into the lightly defended Krogan rear areas. The Krogan responded by dropping space stations and asteroids on Turian colonies. Three worlds were rendered completely uninhabitable. This was precisely the wrong approach to take with the Turians. Each is first and foremost a public servant, willing to risk his life to protect his comrades. Rather than increasing public war weariness, Krogan tactics stiffened Turian resolve. The arrival of Turian task forces saved many worlds from the warlords' marauding fleets, but it took development of the Genophage bioweapon to end the war. There were decades of unrest afterwards. Rogue warlords and holdout groups of insurgents refused to surrender or disappeared into the frontier systems to become pirates. Aliens, non-council races, quarians, pilgrimage. When quarians of the migrant fleet reach young adulthood, they must leave their birth ship and find a new crew to accept them as permanent residents. To prove themselves, they must recover something of value. This is offered to their prospective captain as proof that they will not be a mere burden on the shoestring resources of the ship. This process is called the pilgrimage. Stripped of ritual, the pilgrimage is merely an attempt to maintain genetic diversity within the small, relatively isolated population bases that make up the migrant fleet. If the young stayed and married within their birth vessel, the risk of inbreeding would increase sharply. Quarians are surgically fitted with their various immunity-boosting implants in preparation for leaving on pilgrimage. Having grown up within the sterile controlled environments of the migrant fleet ships, quarians have virtually no natural immune system. Citadel and Galactic Government, Citadel Conventions. These diplomatic talks occurred in the wake of the Kurogan rebellions as a response to the destruction of the conflict and an attempt to distance the Council from the brutal Krogan warfare. The conventions regulate the use of weapons of mass destruction. A WMD causes environmental alteration to a world. A bomb that produces a large crater is not considered a WMD. A bomb that causes a nuclear winter is. Use of WMD is forbidden on garden worlds, like Earth, with ecospheres that can readily support a population. 
If a habitable world is destroyed, it will not be replaced for millions of years. The conventions do not forbid the use of WMD on hostile worlds or in sealed space station environments. Many militaries continue to develop and maintain stockpiles. The conventions graded weapons of mass destruction into tiers of concern. Tier 1 is the greatest threat to galactic peace. Tier 1 – Large kinetic impactors, such as asteroid drops or deorbiting space stations. Effectively free and available in any system, in the form of debris left over from planetary accretion, Kinetic impactors are the weapon of choice for terrorists and third galaxy nations. Tier 2. Uncontrolled self-replicating weapons, such as nanotechnology, viral or bacteriological organisms, non-Newman devices and destructive computer viruses. These weapons can lie dormant for millennia, waiting for a careless visitor to carry them on to another world. Tier 3. Large energy burst weapons such as nuclear or antimatter warheads. Tier 4. Alien species deliberately introduced to crowd out native forms necessary for the health of an ecosystem. Ecological tampering can take years to bear fruit, making it difficult to prove. Citadel and Galactic Government, Citadel Station, Citadel Security Services, or CSEC for short. Citadel Security is a volunteer police service answering to the Citadel Council. The 200,000 constables of CSEC are responsible for maintaining public order in the densely populated citadel. They also provide pirate suppression, customs enforcement and search and rescue throughout the citadel cluster. CSEC has six divisions. Enforcement – uniformed officers who patrol the citadel and respond to emergencies. Investigation – Detectives who puzzle out the truth behind crimes and bring predators to justice. Customs. Screens the thousands of passengers and cargo containers that pass through the Citadel ports every day. Network. Deals with cyber crimes like identity and copyright theft, hacking and viral attacks, and illegal artificial intelligence. Special Response deals with hostage situations, bombs and heavily armed criminals. In the unlikely event that attackers board the Citadel, they are also the front line of defense armed with military-grade equipment. Patrol, a naval arm with ships stationed throughout the Citadel cluster. Unlike the other divisions, they are rarely seen at the Citadel, nor do they stay in one place long. Joining CSEC is prestigious. Applications must be sponsored by a Citadel Council or the ambassador of an associate council race. Generally, applicants have many years of distinguished service in the military or police forces of their own nation, but an inexperienced applicant with demonstrable talent will be fairly considered. CSEC and the Spectres are often at odds. Many CSEC members notably current executor Venari Palin, believe that allowing specters to be above the law is a dangerous practice. The actions of Saren Arterius lend credence to this position. The specters, in turn, are aggravated when CSEC's dedication to procedure and due process hampers their investigations. Citadel and Galactic Government, Citadel Station, Presidium Ring. The ring is an enclosed loop of park-like space serving as the connection point for the wards. The interior walls are lined with the embassies of influential species and private residences for the galaxy's elite. The Presidium is full of open-air restaurants, bars and luxurious meeting areas. Gravity is about one-third Earth normal. A holographic sky is projected over the ceiling of the ring. Unlike the 24-7 bustle of the wards, the Presidium maintains a 20-hour day schedule 
with a six hour night where lights are dimmed and the sky goes through a night cycle. Offices and residencies are often open to the interior. It is not unusual for embassies to have no exterior wall at all. This does not cause a crime problem due to the heavy CSEC presence and ubiquitous monitoring devices on the Presidium. Thieves are quickly identified and apprehended. The ring is the location of the Citadel spaceports. Being closer to the center of spin, there is less motion for a ship to match, and the reduced spin gravity makes handling cargo easier. Hundreds of ships pass through the Citadel every day, and every species with an embassy is granted a private dock. The tower at the center of the ring holds the administration of the Citadel Council. The tower rises over a kilometer from the ring, appearing to thrust forward parallel to the ward arms. As the tower is at the center of the spin axis, it experiences little centrifugal force. Gravity is maintained using mass effect fields at a 90 degrees angle to the ring and wards. A councillor dock can be found at the base of the tower. While normally used for diplomatic couriers and specter business, the shuttle's dock there can evacuate the council government in an emergency. Citadel and Galactic Government, Citadel Station, Serpent Nebula. The Citadel is surrounded by a blue-tinted reflection nebula. The light of the nebula is actually light from the Citadel scattered and refracted back at the station. At first the Serpent Nebula was assumed to be made of microscopic non struction debris. Prevailing theory holds that the proteins used molecular nanotechnology to manufacture the incredibly durable materials used in the citadel. But unlike other nebulae, the serpent does not dissipate over time. Therefore, it must be replenished constantly. The current popular theory is that the non-recyclable waste collected by the citadel's keepers is somehow rendered down to the atomic or molecular level and ejected into the cloud. The thick nebula presents a navigation hazard. Beyond the relatively clear areas around the citadel, electric discharges are common. These are not blocked by kinetic barriers and can severely damage metal-framed starships. In addition, some dense knots of dust can overwhelm the repulsion of kinetic barriers on smaller ships. If such a vessel is moving fast enough at the time, the effects are similar to being hit by a sandblaster. Attempting to reach the citadel through open space navigation is unadvisable. The only safe approach is through the various mass relays that orbit it. Citadel and Galactic Government, Citadel Station, Statistics. Although the Citadel is equipped with mass effect generating element zero cores, most of the gravity on the station is generated by the centrifugal force of rotation. Rotation 3.5 minutes per revolution. Rotational gravity in the ward 1.02 of Earth. Rotational gravity in the Presidium 0.3 of Earth. Total length open. 44.7 km. Diameter open 12.8 km. Ward length 43.6 km. Ward width 330 meters. Presidium ring diameter 7.2 km. Presidium ring width 553 meters. Exterior armor thickness 13 meters. Population 3.2 million, not including keepers. Gross weight 7.11 billion metric tons. Height of the Presidium Tower 1047 meters. Citadel and Galactic Government. Citadel Station, Wards. The majority of Citadel's population lives in the wards. 
the five massive arms of the station that house the residential and commercial districts. Many galactic races have established cultural enclaves here. Population density and cost of living are extremely high, akin to Earth cities such as Hong Kong and Singapore. The wards are open-topped, with skyscrapers rising from the superstructure. Towers are sealed against the vacuum, as the breathable atmosphere envelope is only maintained to a height of about 7 meters. The atmosphere is contained by a decentrifugal force of rotation and a membrane of dense, colorless sulfuric hexafluoride gas, held in place by carefully managed mass effect fields. The view from the wards is spectacular. In the background, stars, serpent nebula and the nearby blue giant called the Widow move across the sky as the station rotates to stabilize itself. In the foreground, the lights of buildings and vehicles on the opposing ward arms perpetually shine. The Citadel has no real day or night. While the station keeps to standard galactic time for political functions, businesses rarely close and residents acclimate to sleep and work according to personal need rather than a day-night cycle. Additions and modifications are constantly being constructed though they must stay within certain specifications that will not compromise the operation of the station. Occasionally, the keepers will descend on an area of the ward and move or change the architecture without explanation. Residents have learned to live with these inexplicable intrusions. Citadel and Galactic Government, Treaty of Farixen Due to the destructive potential of dreadnoughts, the Council races agreed that the Farix and Naval Conference to fix a ratio of dreadnought constriction between themselves. At the top of the pyramid is the peacekeeping Turian fleet. Below the Turians are the other Council races, currently the Asari and Salarians. Council associate races are at the bottom. The Human System Alliance is part of this last group. The ratio of Turian to Council to associate dreadnoughts is 5 to 3 to 1. For every dreadnought humans are permitted to build, the Asari have 3 and the Turians 5. Humanity and the System Alliance System Alliance Military Jargon Ashore When a ship's crew leaves a vessel, they are ashore. Though normally used regarding planets, it can refer to boarding a space station. Away. When a ship releases the equipment tethering it to a space station or surface dock, it is away. Aye aye. The proper way to acknowledge an order. If told to attack, the correct response is aye aye sir. If asked, are you proud to be a marine, the correct response is yes sir. ASAP pronounced ASAP, an acronym of as soon as possible. Belay, stop, seize, bridge, the navigation center of a spacecraft where the steering is done. Captain's mast, non-judicial disciplinary proceedings by unit commanders. CIC, combat information center. The command center of a spacecraft. The CIC is filled with sensor displays to make sense out of the chaos of combat. DC, damage control. The containment and repair of damage to a spacecraft. ECM, electronic countermeasures used to avoid enemy sensors, from passive emissions masking to active jamming. EVA, extravehicular activity. Time spent in a pressure suit outside of a vehicle, spacecraft or station. Flank, the flank is the side of a military formation. Since the soldiers are facing elsewhere, an enemy that can attack on the flank can often turn it or roll it up. FNG, freaking new guys. 
a derisive term for inexperienced personnel. Ground side, the surface of a planet. Helmsman, a crew member who pilots a spacecraft. Ladar, light amplified detection and ranging. An active sensor that bounces lasers off an object to determine its bearing and distance. LADAR has sufficient resolution that the data can be reconstructed into an image. Shore party. Spacecraft crew sent ashore on official business. Silent running. An old submariner's term used aboard the Normandy to denote when stealth systems are active. SITREP. Abbreviation of Situation Report, an evaluation of the current military situation. Spacer, someone who has spent most their life in space. XO, Executive Officer, the second in command of an Alliance warship. The XO is responsible for administrative and personal matters. Humanity and the System Alliance Timeline 2069 Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna. It is formally founded on July 24, the 100th anniversary of its first lunar landing. 2103 Lowell City in Eos Chasma becomes the first human settlement on Mars. 2137 Eltfil Ashland Energy Corporation demonstrates helium-3 fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. 2142. Construction of Gagarin Station, Jump Zero, begins beyond the orbit of Pluto. 2148. Prospectors discover the Protheon runes at Promethe Planum on Mars. Twenty-one forty-nine. Translation of Prothean data leads humans to the Koran mass relay. System Alliance founded to coordinate exploration and colonization of extrasolar worlds. Twenty-one fifty-one. A shipping accident at Singapore International Spaceport exposes downwind communities to containers of dust from Element Zero. Alliance begins construction of Arctis Station. 2152, roughly 30% of the children born in Singapore after element zero exposure suffer from cancerous growth. System Alliance begins settlement of Earth's first extrasolar colony world, the planet Demeter. 2154, Commander Shepard born. 2155, System Alliance occupies a completed portion of Arctis Station as a headquarters. 2156. Some children of Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. 2157. Turians encounter human explorers. First contact war. Occupation and liberation of the human colony of Shanxi. 2158. Human learns potential of biotics. An international effort to track element zero exposures begin. Roughly 10% of exposed children show some level of biotic ability. 2160, System Alliance Parliament formed. 2165, humans establish embassy on Citadel. 2170, Barati enslavers attack the Alliance colony of Mindwag. 2176, the Skillian Blitz, pirates and slavers attacked Elysium, the human capital in the Skillian Verge. 2177, Thresher Malls devour the Alliance colony of Accusé. 2178, in retaliation for the Skillian Blitz, an Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slavers on the moon of Torfan. 2183, current date.
ships and vehicles, starships, cruisers. Cruiser-weight starships are the standard combat unit encountered away from large naval bases, the poor bloody infantry of most fleets. Nimble scouting frigates have neither the punch nor the stamina to stand up to serious combat, and the mighty dreadnoughts are a strategic resource carefully hoarded and committed to the most critical battles. Cruisers perform routine independent show the flag patrols in settled systems and lead flotillas of frigates in small engagements such as pirate suppression campaigns. In major fleet engagements, cruiser squadrons support the dreadnought battle line by screening their flanks against enemies attempting to maneuver for a main gun bow shot from their vulnerable broadsides. Alliance cruisers are named after cities of Earth. Ships and vehicles, starships, dreadnoughts. The dreadnought is the ultimate arbiter of space warfare. Millions of tons of metal, ceramic and polymer dedicated to the projection of firepower against an enemy vessel of like ability. No sane commander would face a dreadnought with anything less than another dreadnought. A dreadnought's power lies in the length of its main gun. Dreadnoughts range from 800 meters to 1 kilometer long with a main gun of commensurate length. An 800 meter mass accelerator is capable of accelerating one 2 kilogram slug to a velocity of 283 kilometers per second every 2 seconds. Each slug has the kinetic energy of 38 kilotons of TNT, three times the energy released by the fission weapons that destroyed Hiroshima. When used to bombard planets, some of this kinetic energy is lost due to atmospheric re-entry friction. As a rule of thumb, each Earth atmosphere of air pressure saps approximately 20% of a projectile's impact energy. The Turian fleet presently has 37 dreadnoughts, the Asari 21 and the Salarian 16. Humanity has 6, with an additional hull under construction at Arctic Station. Alliance battleships are named for mountains of Earth. Everest class, Average, Fuji and Elbrus, Kilimanjaro class, the Kilimanjaro, Taishan, Shasta, Aconcagua, which is under construction. Ships and vehicles, starships, fighters. Fighters are a single pilot combat small craft. They are lightweight enough that they can be economically fitted with powerful element zero cores making them capable of greater acceleration and sharper maneuvers than starships. Kinetic barrier shields change starship battles from short vicious bloodbaths to extended indecisive sluggish matches. Only the main gun of a dreadnought could punch a mass accelerator slug through the barriers of an opposing dreadnought. This changed with the development of the fighter-launched mass disruptive torpedo a short-ranged weapon that can penetrate kinetic barriers to destroy their projector assemblies. Starship Guardian defenses must be overwhelmed through swarm tactics. Fighter groups can take heavy casualties pressing their torpedo attacks home. Once fighter-launched torpedoes have crippled an enemy barriers, the mass accelerators on frigates and cruisers can make short work of them. Interceptors are a type of fighter optimized to attack other fighters with no ability to damage starships. Interceptors are used to screen friendly units from incoming fighter attacks. Ships and vehicles, starships, frigates. Frigates are light escort and scouting vessels. They often have extensive guardian systems to provide anti-fighter screening for capital ships and carry a squad of marines for security and groundside duty. Unlike larger vessels, frigates are able to land on planets. Frigate drive systems allow them to achieve high FTL cruise speeds. They also have proportionally larger thrusters and lighter design mass, allowing them to maneuver more handily. In combat, 
speed and maneuverability make a frigate immune to the long-range fire of larger vessels. In the time it takes projectiles to reach them, frigates are no longer where they were preceded to be. In fleet combat, frigates are organized into wolfpack flotillas of 4 to 6. Wolfpack speed through enemy formations, hunting enemy vessels whose kinetic barriers have been taken down by fighter-launch disruptor torpedoes. The Wolfpack circle strafes vulnerable targets using their superior speed and maneuverability to evade return fire. Alliance frigates are named for great battles in human history. Ships and vehicles, starship sensors. Light lag prevents sensing in real time at great distances. A ship firing its thrusters at the Charon Relay can be easily detected from Earth 5.75 light hours or 6 billion kilometers away, but Earth will only see the event 5 hours and 45 minutes after it occurs. Due to the light speed limit, defenders can't see enemies coming until they have already arrived. Because there is FTL travel and communications, but no FTL sensors, Frigates are crucial for scouting and picking duties. Passive sensors are used for long-range detection, while active sensors obtain short-range, high-quality targeting data. Passive sensors include visual, thermographic and radio detectors that watch and listen for objects in space. A powered ship emits a great deal of energy. The heat of the life support systems, the radiation given off by power plants and electrical equipment, the exhaust of the thrusters. The starships stand out plainly against the near absolute zero background of space. Passive sensors can be used during FTL travel, but incoming data is significantly distorted by the effects of the mass effect envelope and Doppler shift. Active sensors are radars and high-resolution radars, laser detection and ranging, that emit a ping of energy and listen for return signals. Radars have a narrower field of view than radar, but radar resolution allows images of detected objects to be assembled. Active sensors are useless when a ship is moving at FTL speeds. Technology, Biotics, Biotic Amps Biotics manipulate mass effect fields using dozens of element zero nodules within their nervous system that react to electric stimuli from the brain. Amplifiers allow biotics to synchronize the nodules so they can form fields large and strong enough for practical use. Amplifiers can improve a specific discipline or talent. An implant is a surgically embedded interface port into which amps are plugged in. On humans, the implant is usually placed at the base of the skull for convenient access, though the user must be careful to keep it free of contaminants. Implant ports can fit a variety of amps and there is a growing market for modifications and add-ons. The finest quality implants and amps are manufactured by Asari Artisans, but the Alliance L3 implants, first deployed in 2170, are a significant step forward. Technology, Communications, Administration While convoys allow rapid transmission, there is a finite amount of bandwidth available. Given that trillions of people may be trying to pass a message through a given boy at any time, Access to the network is parceled out on priority tiers. The Citadel Council and the Spectres have absolute priority. If they are using all the bandwidth, everyone else must wait. Individual governments and their militaries enjoy the next highest tier. During wartime, civilian communication can suffer hours or even days of lag. Intelligence agencies study ping times through various systems to predict military buildups. Below the governments and militaries, bandwidth priority is sold to the highest bidder. 
media conglomerates, particularly headline news networks, purchase higher priority to provide their viewers with timely information. Corporations that require timely information and response capability, for example financial institutions and investment firms, also invest heavily in priority access. The funds acquired through sales of bandwidth are used to maintain and expand the communications infrastructure. While everyone with a computer has guaranteed free and unlimited access to the galactic extranet, they are last in line for bandwidth and may have to wait for their requests to be processed. Bandwidth resale corporations use investment capital to purchase blocks of high priority access made available by paid subscription. Technology, credits or creds. The standard credit was established by the Citadel's Unified Banking Act as the currency of interstellar trade. The credit has a managed floating exchange rate, calculated in real time by the central bank to maintain the average value of all participating currencies. Some regional currencies are worth more than a credit and some less. Hard currency can be stolen or counterfeited, so electronic fund transfers are the norms. More importantly, physical transactions cannot be easily tracked, making them ideal for tax evasion or the purchase of illegal goods. When the Alliance joined the Citadel, its various national treasuries were linked into the credit network. A human with a bank account of Mexican pesos, Japanese yen or Indian rupees can purchase any item priced in credits at fair market value. All economies that participate in the credit network are required to price items in both local currency and credits. Weapons, armor and equipment upgrades. The development of practical manufacturing omni-tools allow modern militaries a great deal of flexibility in equipment loadouts. A vast number of field modification kits or upgrades are available for common equipment such as weapons, armor, omnitools, biotic amps and even grenades. An upgrade kit typically consists of less than a dozen unique parts and an optical storage disk. When loaded into an omnitool, the OSD provides all technical specifications required to manufacture the tools and additional parts necessary to install the upgrade onto another piece of equipment. Assembly is typically modular and installation can be completed in less than a minute. Since Omnitools are designed to use common battlefield salvage materials such as plastic, ceramics and light metals rendered into semi-molten Omnigel for quick use, it is quite possible for a trained soldier carrying upgrade kits to customize gear on the battlefield to fit the current tactical situation. Boop. This is offered to their prospective Boop. warfare. Boop. Many years of it. Boop. It experiences little centrific centrifugal. Centrifugal, centrifugal. Okay. Boop. The centrif. Well, I hate that word. Boop. Most of the gravital, gravital, gravity. Boop. The stu superstructure. Boop. Due to this. Frigates are light escort and scouting veg vegetables. What the hell? Boop. The standard credit was established by the city. Nah. Nah. Boop. Mm. Boop. More importantly, physical transactions can't. Transactions? Transactions. Ah. Boop. Division or the purchase of a league. 
Bidi 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 bidi.